How's everybody doing today? Doing fine, doing well. Awesome, can't complain at all. Ready to get to it a little bit. Excited to get everybody's thoughts in regards to employee benefits and our compensation, uh, development of a high performance workplace, and I'm also excited to get some thoughts on the training and development of our employees. Uh, these are values that we hold dear to us, and these are values that we think um, <clears throat> provide the greatest uh, gaining retention of employees and also increase our employee morale. So that is something that we have been looking for, and we are very happy that uh, the three of you have specialized in each of those. Uh, fields. So just to remind you guys, about six months ago, we are a family-owned company. We were founded in 1928. Uh, we specialize in delivering concrete, and we specialize in delivering in the Midwest. Um, you know, we have a wide range of consumers. This can range anywhere from contractors, architects, engineers, and sometimes we also do work for cities as well. So we are a pretty big company. Uh, we're involved in a lot of different things in regards to construction. Uh, also, we are a union. We are in part of the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 150, which specializes mostly in the Midwest. And something we have tried to do is dedicate uh, our core values to honesty, integrity, and quality, and that is something that we try to replicate uh, with our employees and how we go about doing things in regards to them. So just kind of remind you guys um, about our industry, um, some kind of things that we have been doing, or the industry has been doing in regards to construction. Uh, we rely heavily on skilled labor, but there has been a lack on skilled labor. There's not enough young talent to replace retiring, uh, <coughs> retiring talent, so that is something that uh, causes projects to be delayed, cost to rise, less quality work. So that is kind of why we brought you guys in to kind of take a look at employee benefits development of high performance workplace and training and development to see what we can do to gain and retain staff. Gain and retain staff as well. Um, you know, some things, there is a little bit of job insecurity here as well. So just making sure that we increase those benefits is important to us <coughs> in regards to that, just so that we uh, have empl higher employee morale, ultimately leading to a better um, overall company. So some things also that the industry is investing in is training and development programs, which is something that we have done as well, which you guys have sat in, uh, all of that, um, as well as health and safety procedures is something as well. So while you were here the past six months, what were some things that you saw here at Osinga in regards to development of a high performance workplace? Okay, so I've seen a lot of employee engagement, and this is through a connection with one another as well as the company overall. I'm aware that we are a family-oriented company, so we try to correspond to the family implemented values. This focuses on an atmosphere centered around respect, encouragement, and growth, which is really important to employees to know that they are empowered. Um, we uplift our employees to strive for lifelong learning, and some programs that are offered for this lifelong learning is um, programs in connection with the International Union of Operating Engineers. We offer apprenticeships and skill improvement programs. These are specific where employees can choose from whatever area they're specializing in, and we also have a training center where employees can learn um, and further their growth with the company. We also learn on the job site through management and other employees. We really learn from one another. We have development in group settings to accomplish tasks as well as individual flexibility to complete projects overall. Okay. Uh, which of those aspects did you think is most important in maintaining and developing a high performance workplace? Honestly, I think that the specific programs that are offered are the most important because that means that our employees will be able to be further developed and they'll just have more opportunities to grow. So that's something that you think that we should keep keep doing in order to maintain a high form of workplace? Yes. So what are some things that you saw that we could change or maybe implement now uh, moving forward? Um, I feel like a personalized <coughs> training and developmental plan for every individual employee will be a good idea. With this, we can have exact information and abilities that each employee needs to acquire to reach their objectives and make a greater contribution to the organization. And this will really support their career objectives overall that align with the company. Um, I also think that regular performance reviews would be a good idea, and we can focus on strengths and weaknesses and how to grow those strengths 
And I think that it would be a good idea to have feedback on both ends, on the management perspective and the employee perspective. Um, and I know I really specified that I thought the developmental programs were a good aspect, but I think that we can offer a wider range of those. So maybe we could offer like some online training, some workshops, some mentorship, and some coaching. So you're saying that personalized training to each employee would be kind of important to just kind of understand their needs so that they felt that their, need, their needs are being met and this would increase employee morale, you think? I agree. You would agree? Okay, awesome. Um, so next, I would just like to dive into um, the training and development of staff. Ryan, I know that you were down there uh, yeah. doing some things with that. What are kind of some things that you saw, or what is some, what, why is it important to you for training and development of staff? Like, what does that look like for you? So I think, um, I think that having a good program for training and development of staff is important for any company, especially when you want to have a company that's expanding, like jobs are going to open up, so you need to be able to promote from within for those future jobs, because that, that can be a lot cheaper than going through like an interview process with a bunch of candidates. It's a lot quicker if you have somebody you know is right for the job within the company already, so you just promote them and they're, they're ready. Um, so I think having that and then also just being able to train employees and have like higher competence is really big for any company that wants to perform well. Okay, so you're really big on you know developing our employees, developing with them, kind of making sure that they're going through the whole entire process is kind of something that is important there. Yeah, exactly. yeah so over your six months here, what is something that you have seen um, that we are doing? So what I saw <coughs> was uh, a little bit of training with some truck drivers, like your older truck drivers would help out with training the new truck drivers, which is a good, a good practice for sure. And then I saw that the union is responsible for a majority of the training and they give you like apprentices and they provide the apprenticeships. So I think that's a good path to have as well for uh, your employees for, uh, for training. Yeah, why, why do you think, uh, do you think the method that we have of having older driver, older drivers, more experienced drivers, do you think that helps the younger generation? Oh, definitely. Why yeah, do you I think, think that is, do you think it's? I think it's just because they have obviously more experience and they can give those new drivers tips all the time, so. Okay, in your six months here, um, you know, you kind of observed some things, so I just kind of want to get your thoughts now on some things that maybe we can change or some new things that we can implement um, <clears throat> for our training and development programs. Okay, so from what I saw from like employee reviews online as well was that uh, you guys have fairly low scores for your guys' opportunities to like develop and train employees. And I saw that a lot of them thought there wasn't much of a budget there. So I think um, a lot of focus should especially be put on office workers as they don't really have the same opportunities to get training and development from like the union. Okay. So uh, I think there needs to be a little more focus from Ozinga directly to help develop those employees. And um, I th we thought that like the best way to do that would be through like a mentorship program, which is something you guys are already sort of familiar with from like the union. So we were saying that um, you should assign like a mentor, like have somebody in the upper management be like a mentor and they would have either one or they could have a couple of lower level employees okay. and take them under their wing how do, you, how do you think we should assign mentors? Um, I think maybe, maybe the upper management people already know of employees on the lower levels that they like, so maybe they could be employees, like be their mentors. Okay. But also if you want to have like maybe a luncheon or like something for like the upper management to have an opportunity to meet some of the lower level employees, okay. I think that would be a good way to at least start that process of so, getting mentors. Yeah, so kind of incorporate everybody so everybody feels fluid throughout almost. Exactly, yeah. I what you're saying. So, um, yeah, so I would start with that, and then I think the best way to go about helping these employees would just be through learning directly from like their mentors, through like just having meetings, but I think it would also be good for you guys to start implementing um, like events, like lectures and stuff around your, around your building. Um, I think um, overall, I think this would take about maybe three, two years, um, whereas like the union process for like in apprenticeships would be like five. 
so it could be shorter term, but um, I think this will lead eventually to like having employees better prepared when promotions become available, and that this will also allow like your upper management to be more familiar when those people are eventually up close to their level or working with them closer. So I think that is uh, a hugely beneficial area. And I think eventually you guys would also want to continue to expand this area with uh, having some workforce. So like some of like your truck drivers or some of like the concrete workers okay. starting to get into this process because they can, once they're at a level of experience, they can also become managers for those areas and they will have to be kind of out to dry. Okay. So it seemed that you know a lot of the, the common theme almost here was that there's not many opportunities to grow. That's something that I personally had not thought of. I'm glad that you had brought that up and brought that to my attention. Yeah, it um, seemed like it, sorry. it just seemed like you guys do talk about how you guys value learning every day and having development, but there's not really any specific processes within the company to really focus on this. So like obviously it's a it's an important piece, but um, right. But yeah, it's kind of just something you guys want to have just doing throughout like everyday work, but okay. something you can really add or focus on. So. so would you say that you saw that affect employee morale or when you were down there for six months, were you seeing that our employees maybe not have been motivated or maybe they were complaining about some of those things? Yeah, there was a little bit of uh, low motivation, I okay. kind of felt, because it seemed like not a, not a lot of them felt like prepared for a promotion and I also didn't see like a process for the, their future for like a future promotion so which is that's something I'm not thought of thank you for bringing that to my attention I appreciate that very much Tyler I'd like to thank you for your past six months of uh, specializing in our employee benefits and compensation uh, I just kind of want to get your thoughts first also on you know why it is that you think employee benefits and compensation is so important especially to a company like ours well, uh, employee benefits and compensation is going to keep your workers happy. Uh, you got to keep a happy workforce, to have a strong workforce, to have a motivated workforce. Uh, so you know that you have competitors in the, cir in the surrounding areas, such as Orange Crush or uh, Prairie. Um, these people are going to try and take out from your pool, and it's a low pool right now, as we know that a lot of younger people aren't joining into the construction labor workforce and uh, you gotta find a way to extract those people and get as much experience, talent as you can have. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of steps and processes into going into what you can bring to your workers that others won't. Uh, so I already know that you guys are in close in collaboration with the local 150 union. Uh, so I know things such as uh, pensions and employee insurance are covered through the unit to union dues. So I would say you have to take it from different a aspects of the employee benefit and compensation realm to get yourself going. So what I was thinking, I had a plan in my head that you, I just wanted to bounce back off of you. I was thinking about a stock ownership program. I know that you guys are in a publicly traded company, but uh, I was thinking of something like an 80-20 split between the head management and the owners of the company throughout the workers. So it would be an 80 to 80% of uh, the ownership of the company to the top management and the owners, and then 20% to the to the laborers and uh, your working class people in this uh, organization. This will give you guys a sense of, you still have your bigger piece of the company, uh, but your workers will have a feeling that they own some of this company, so it makes them, one, stay more loyal to your company because they have a lot in stake for it and two it's going to make them want to be motivated and come to work every day because they feel as if they are tied to this company through this ownership stake uh, and they are seizing the means of production and that makes them feel like they can uh, implement themselves better into this company a little bit like that and then I wanted to come at it again so I know that you guys are through your people that are in the field and everything like that, I understand that those people are covered through the union, and that's how they get their employee benefits, such as their pension and their uh, health insurance. But I understand that you do have many different aspects that go into this company, such as your office workers and uh, site supervisors and uh, OSHA employees that you subcontract. So I was thinking something like that, you need to get 
push towards the unionization of your office workers as well, because a lot of people think when they have a union, it's only uh, laborers, um, skilled tradesmen. But unions, uh, they can work in any aspect of the workforce. So you can end up having people within your office spaces, they can unionize and they can put together their own union dues and they'll keep the company in check and you keep them in check. So it's a 50 50 split. And they can figure out with their employee health insurance and they can figure out with their pension plans and things like that, but you can't block that. So you have to invite more unionization within the company to try and uh, get your workers what they deserve the best they can. Um, other than that, I understand uh, employee benefits and compensation can go a long way uh, and make your, your workers feel like they are appreciated and well deserved. Through the unions, you guys are giving up top dollar uh, because that's what the union requires you guys to do. Um, but another thing you can add into the mix is potentially pay services and bonuses on top of the union t uh, pay scale. Whenever you guys are exceeding expectations or you're having a good year, uh, you can do gain sharing or um, gain sharing for the most part. So whenever you guys are gaining as a company, you want to distribute that down towards the workers at the lower level because that'll make them feel like, oh, the company is doing great, so I should feel the reprimand because I am the one that is making this because uh, capital needs labor as much as capital as labor needs capital. If you get what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So how did you land on stock ownership? That's I found it an interesting idea. Why do you think that would be a good idea specifically for this company? Oh well, I, well you guys aren't a publicly traded. You guys aren't public traded, right. so you guys can't do a stock share program. So it's more of an ownership program. So um, the workers will gain a share of the company, 20% of it, and then you guys keep the 80% of it. So they'll use work within themselves to distribute how they're going to distribute the profits that they are given from it. And uh, it's just a really, you, you've seen it in the past in other places. It's usually not practiced in this country, but you can bring it towards it. Um, once you have that in place, they just fit the, since it's in their name and distributed among themselves, they feel just as obligated to keep the company going as you do, because if it's everything on you, the burden all falls on you and your workers can leave and go to another place. But now that they have a part ownership of the company and the means of production, they know that if the company falls, it's extrinsically tied to them themselves. Right. So, how does all of this make us a little bit different from our competitors and kind of give us, you know, the advantage on retaining our employees and getting employees? Well, nobody else does that in this industry and within the local uh, confines of the Midwest. Um, so, if word spreads around. Um, understanding that that's the kind of function that you guys work here, what you guys do here, um, people, it will attract people. So you can potentially see people leaving other companies just to come to yours for this special aspect. And um, this will breed competition. Um, you'll get better and better workers uh, from this, uh, it'll, you, which allows you to expand the company. You don't necessarily have to fire workers, but the more and more people you take from other companies, they'll get less and less workloads. You take those workloads on, and that's yours to work with. So Tyler, I know this is something that you've been doing for a while, specializing in employee benefits and compensation. Have these recommendations that you've made today kind of been something you've seen work in the past, or how has that kind of worked out for you? Oh, well, yes, I've seen it work in other industries, and I've seen it work in this industry as well. Uh, it just depends on how you implement it into the system. You can't just do it right away, you're gonna have to chip away at it so you can get about 5% and you get 10% and you get 15 and then you ultimately get to your goal 20. Um, Why is it important to chip away at it rather than just dive into it? I because if you throw it into the fire like that, if they run, then you're not, you have to let them, you have to gain their trust as much as they're gaining yours. Um, you can't just throw this into the fire with such great profit and such great ownership of the company at stake with 20%. So you just take away five, if something goes wrong, you're only losing 5% of that. Uh, and then you can know that this isn't gonna work for you, but if you chip away at it, and go and exceed and exceed and exceed, it'll give your workers more confidence as well as yourself. Interesting, awesome. Uh, any other points from anybody today? I'm gonna sum it up, come on. Awesome, well, 
I would like to thank all of you very much for the uh, past six months of hard work. It's been it's been a battle. It's been an uphill climb for sure. But um, you know, I I would like to thank all of you. Um, you know, I'm glad that you brought up you know personalized um, you know training for each employee. That's not something I thought of. You know, kind of my understanding now of it is that you know each employee has different needs and expectations and in order to best reach them it might be important to um <clears throat> you know have that personalized training for them so that they can kind of you know go about things their own way using those apprenticeships things of that manner um i liked your idea with mentorships you know kind of keeping those who are experienced um <clears throat> keeping those who are experienced training the younger guys you know because i do believe that those those older guys more experienced guys do have a lot to offer and i think that our younger guys will definitely benefit from that um, also expanding on some of our apprenticeship offerings, um, you know, the classes that we offer, making it more engaging, that's something I definitely would agree with you on there. And Tyler, um, I also like your idea of, you know, gain sharing, um, stake in the company, you know, I know we're not a publicly traded company, so that's something that we'd have to look into, but, you know, I definitely think that would motivate our companies very well, um, and I would just like to thank you all very much for your time today. All right, thank you everybody, it was a pleasure. See you. How's it going? Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you very much. Safe travels, everybody.